Greetings. Welcome to our show, Ghosts Are Near, where we discuss various aspects of the paranormal and paranormal exploration. I'm your host, Keith Johnson, founder of NEAR, New England Anomalies Research. With me is my co-host and co-founder, Sandra Johnson. Hello there. It just wouldn't be ghosts are near with a good greetings. Right, exactly. And I welcome our studio audience. There we go. <laughs> See? We do have a real live we studio really audience. That proves it. Which we very much appreciate. <laughs> and it's growing and growing and getting bigger and bigger. Right? Yeah, from one to, uh, what do we have now? You know, seven? Well, eight? it's getting bigger and bigger. We've had a room full before, of course. Yeah. This is good. Mm -hmm. We're moving along. And I'd like to introduce our distinguished <coughs> guest for this evening. Dave Kane is a radio talk show host. He's a stand-up comedian, uh, well known for doing Father Aloysius Misgivings impersonation. And um, he has also been uh, connotated the pit bull of comedy. Oh my God, yeah. somebody's been I reading my that. website. I don't yeah. know. <laughs> and, um, he has also written a book. He's an author of the book, 41 Signs of Hope. Now, unfortunately, Dave lost a son in the Station nightclub fire, and uh, his son, Nick, has seemingly been giving signs, and they have to do with the number 41. So we'll be talking about that, but first of all, Let's give a big round of applause for Dave Kane. All right, I love it. All right, I'm, there he is. All right, it's the man himself. I'm, I'm leaving now. I'm ahead. I'm leaving oh, now. No, you, you're just getting started. You're just getting you started. You have a story to tell. I do. <laughs> yes, I do. a very, very poignant story. Mm -hmm. it, yeah, it all began uh, with the uh, Station Nightclub fire. Now, a lot of people may not realize, but the Station right. Nightclub fire was the fourth largest nightclub fire in American history. Right. It's astounding. And One, certainly the worst in Rhode Island history. Absolutely. Right? Right. Uh, 100 people passed. Uh, 200 people and more injured, when I say and more, physically injured 200, thousands injured emotionally mm -hmm. uh, to, the, to the breaking point. Unbelievable right. devastation. And that took place on February 20th, yes. 2003? Thursday night, February 20th, 2003. And uh, our son Nick was, uh, was at the station nightclub that night. He, his band was supposed to open, his band Shrine, mm -hmm. S-H-R, Y and E, as Nick used to say, <laughs> and uh, probably still does. And um, and uh, he, he was he went the night before to kind of check out the room, etc. And the fire happened, and and he passed. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now, the the book is called Forty One Signs of Hope because um, before Nicky passed, he had a thing for the number forty one. Mm -hmm. You get in the car with me, say, Dad, look, it's two forty one, or you see a license plate, Dad, forty one, forty one, mm -hmm. and he could. And we we didn't know what this was about. His brother Chris tried to help him, and and nobody could figure out why this number. Mm -hmm. Well, when he passed, Nicky was eighteen and twenty three days, forty one, right. and the youngest. The, person in yes. the state station night right. nightclub fire. And the station nightclub is at latitude 41.41. Yeah. The fire call That's box at the station is 4414. Mm -hmm. And on the cover of my book is a sketch from my pal Charlie Hall, uh, who did a sketch of Nick from a videotape we found a year after he passed. In the, uh, in the videotape, Nick's mom is holding him. He's about four months old. He has a baseball uniform on and the number on the cap is 41. Uh -huh. I'll oh let my the goodness. camera get a shot of this. And you'll see the 41 here. Oh yeah. Now, hmm. this began and then continued. And we started to get many signs, not all of which were 41s. We uh -huh. got feathers and music and 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 well, I can understand uh, the music um, because yeah, of your son being exactly. a musician. What uh, about the feathers? Well, uh, angel feathers uh, yeah, appear right. for a lot of people who are getting I signs. I've heard of that. Uh, mm -hmm. My wife and I were in the uh, kitchen one night, all alone in the house, hugging a little, and we. I always close my eyes when I hug my wife. I'm <laughs> afraid I'm going to open my eyes and she's going to be gone. So I, I, <laughs> I was hugging her and we heard, like that. And we looked at each other and looked, and there on the counter was a white feather. Hmm. Um, these are the kinds of things that have happened. But they are bigger and continuum, uh, on and ongoing. As they started to pile up, 
at first. And I got to tell you, I wasn't a skeptic. I believed in this Mm -hmm. stuff type of thing. But I had never been exposed to it like I have now. Uh, And and as these, I'd say, as they started, I'd say, oh, that's kind of an interesting coincidence. Or, gee, look at that. And then as they continued, I realized, wait a minute, this is, this is way more than coincidence. And I brought a couple of examples that I think you'll like. One of the stories is that um, Nick's oldest brother, Chris, yes. is 10 years older than he is. Mm-hmm. They were very close, have been very close, joined at the heart, these two. Uh, mm-hmm. Chris was obsessed with videotaping Nikki everywhere in the yard, on stage, in the bedroom, in the bathroom, don't ask. <laughs> and, and, it was, and he was just obsessed and didn't realize why. Of course, now we know because we have the documentary called 41. It's an award-winning documentary that has been on PBS locally. And, mm-hmm. and, and you can see the trailer from the documentary at 41themovie.com. You can check it out. And so all of this videotape that, that Chris took now we see Nikki growing from the time he's wearing the 41 to moments before his passing because we have this video from the, the nightclub that night. Mm-hmm. So very close, Chris and Nick. As a matter of fact, when it was Chris's birthday, he'd let Nikki blow out his candles. Oh, really? Wow. And, mm-hmm. and the year Nikki passed, Chris asked for a new video camera. So we got him a new video camera. And we're all driving to Bugaboo Creek. I can't mention that. I don't want to plug anybody. Bugaboo Creek. Right. About nine of us, <laughs> nine of us in the car, seven of us in the car. And we're all going to Bugaboo Creek. And, and we had given Chris this camera, which was in the present bag. I love these present bags. Mm-hmm. You don't have to wrap anything. You know, you just put it in the bag, oh, yes, right. put it's a bunch a of thing. toilet paper yeah. on top. It's really, it's really terrific. <laughs> Works for me. Yeah, yeah right. And so, so he, he got the bag and he opened the box. And just as he's opening the box, he says to his mom, I guess this year, I have to blow out my own candles. So he opens the box, and inside is a, a brochure from the company, the Samsung company. And this is the picture on the brochure. The picture of a little boy blowing out the candles on a birthday cake. Really? Mm. Now that's pretty cool, especially when you realize that this is Nikki. Oh, wow. Now I'm going to let the camera get a two shot of this. Yeah, somewhat of a resemblance there. Yeah, there, there <laughs> certainly is. I can now, see the hairstyle and everything. Yes. Now, the, the interesting part of this is that I chased this picture down. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's a company called Getty Images that uh, sells these, these photos. Mm-hmm. You know, uh, it was on Samsung. It was on the Western Union mm-hmm. website, this same picture. It took me six years. The Getty people didn't want to talk to me because they thought they had used my son's picture without permission. Oh, really? And they were afraid. (laughs) My wife was absolutely convinced that this was a picture of Nick from a Disney cruise. Mm -hmm. I finally was able to get people at Getty to listen to my story because I told them why I wanted to know this. Mm -hmm. Right. And the photographer who took the picture finally contacted me this year um, and called me at 1141 in the morning. Mm-hmm. And told me uh, that this was, he didn't think this was Nick, that this was taken at a, seri- at a birthday party they put on to get these pictures. Mm-hmm. And he sent me all the, the, the print sheet from the shoot. Mm-hmm. And only in this picture, only in the one I showed you, does this kid look anything like Nicky. Only in that. Only in that. And the other thing, you wouldn't see in the resemblance at all. Only mm-hmm. in this one picture. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. So you can see how stunned we were at that. Right, right, of course. And, and that adds, I think, to the mystery or to the interest of the signs that we begin to get. Right. Very intriguing. Now, there is a story I have. About uh, three years ago, you were a guest on Spooky South Coast Radio. Yeah. Oh, yeah. And they're friends of mine. They've, they've yeah. been on the show mm-hmm. yes. and everything. I've been a frequent guest on their show. Um, when you were on, I happened to call in. In fact, I was the first caller. Uh-huh. I was the first caller by accident, though, because somebody had called right before me. I don't know if you remember this. I do. And the uh, phone just linked off. For some reason, the call didn't go through. So they put my call through, and uh, they were kind of amazed. What happened? You know, something went off for a second. They don't, to this day, they don't know why. But uh, they looked at the clock. It was 1041. It was 1041.41. 
Oh, really? and uh, we were doing that. a three, and we would, oh, absolutely. We were doing a three-way talk. Chris was on his cell phone. I was on my cell phone and Christian D. Resendez, the young man who co-directed and produced the documentary. Mm -hmm. Chris and Chris D. Resendez and I were bumped off the air at that time, but Chris, Nikki's brother was still on, oh, really? wow. <laughs> so he bumped the two of us off and left Chris on, uh -huh. and uh, it was at ten forty one forty one. And the reason I remember that not only because it's, it's I had no idea of it at the time at all. It, it's yeah. certainly in that journal that I remember it because, well because we were told. But what's interesting was right after Nikki passed, mm -hmm. date within a day, we started getting calls at our home in our home. And the caller ID, I think it said 2740000. And every time I answered the phone, there was nobody there. Mm -hmm. Now, this was within a day after. And this went on to two or three days. I was infuriated. Mm -hmm. And I finally called the phone company and said, I want to know who's this, who this jerk is. Mm -hmm. I want to find out who this is. Well, they traced the number. And there is no 2740000. Mm -hmm. There is no such number. And I was told by the host of that show that this is something I learned, which is many times people who pass call the house, mm -hmm. ring the phone, and there's nobody there. So that was something I had learned from that show after getting bounced off at mm -hmm. 10 41 41. Yeah, yeah as, as paranormal investigators, um, we sort of term that uh, transition apparition, even okay. though we don't see anything for a short period after someone passes, they give you all of these signs to let you know they're okay. They leave pennies or what have you. It's interesting. Robert Brown, who uh, is an international medium, uh, he's from England, and he, it was interesting because he said people in other countries don't get coins. We get coins, and he said he thought it was because in our, on our money we have in God we trust. Wow. Yeah. Right, oh. and that's why he thought that was that was. <laughs> mm -hmm. I don't know well, how significant that is, but it was and, and of course, forty is a uh, special number. It's a biblical number, and of course, forty-one is the starting of a new cycle. It's so. astounding, you know. That was one of the things that when we were looking into it, you know, you have the forty days of rain with Noah and the ark, and on the forty-first day, the sun shines. You have the forty days of Lent, mm -hmm. and you know, on the forty-first day, Easter happens. You have the forty days when. Um, uh, Moses goes to the mountain to get the Ten Commandments. Right. Yeah. And the number 40 in the Bible, as you said, is, is very significant to a long time, etc., of mm -hmm. usually pogrom or, or chazarai, and then suddenly there's the, the clearing of. Right. So it, it's a significant number. Mm -hmm. and, and speaking of uh, phone calls, um, you actually shortly after your son's passing received a phone call from his cell phone? Yeah. We did. Um, the fire was on Thursday night, and we didn't hear anything about Nikki for four days. No one called us. No one communicated with us. We knew he was wow. there. We didn't know if he had gotten out. We didn't know if he had been injured. We didn't know if he was alive. I mean, we presumed because of what had happened since yes. we had not heard from him. Mm -hmm. I don't know how many calls I made to his cell phone, of course, to no avail. Then on Monday, and I was answering all of, the, all of the phones. I was answering my wife's phone and my phone and the house phone, and all of my friends from the media were calling me to, to get information. And then I got a call at 10 minutes to 3 and it, on, on Joanne, my wife's cell phone, and it said, Nikki. Well, I went nuts. Pressed the button, nobody there. <clears throat> so I called AT&T, and I asked them, please. I told them what happened. And they traced the call. And, and the phone went on at 10 minutes to 12 and went off. Went back again at 10 minutes to 3 when I got this call. So I figured, okay, it's the rescue workers finding this phone and messing with it, trying to find out who it belongs to. Mm -hmm. That awesome. night we got the call from the police stating that they had Nikki's remains. And you have to go. This is a horrible thing. You have to go and have somebody tell you your son has passed. And you have to yeah. sign a piece of paper. That, that you have been informed. It's, it's an awful ritual. Um, and then we got Nikki's phone. The only thing we got from the fire was his phone. Three days later, I get the phone, and it didn't work. It had been waterlogged and could not operate. So this was Nikki on Monday letting us know that we were going to get that call. Amazing. Wow. 
That's truly amazing. It, it really is. And we went to see the movie White Light. White, no, White Noise. White Noise. White white noise. noise. Yeah. Horrible piece of trash. Right. Uh, <laughs> awful, awful piece of trash. I'll say what I think. Um, but we only went because this guy in the, in the clip, this guy was getting uh, a calls from his wife's cell phone after she passed. Mm-hmm. And when we saw that, we said, oh, we can identify with that. Let's go see this thing. You know, mm-hmm. I want my money back. <laughs> yeah. I don't think we ever bothered to see that, yeah. did we? No, we didn't. <laughs> well, we have the people from the AAEVP. Are you familiar with them? The, yes. the butlers? And yeah. They uh, supplied the audio for the, for the trailer of mm-hmm. that movie. We got an EVP from Nikki with a, during, a, in 41, the movie, you can see a, a session, where, well, after session with Maureen Hancock, a medium from Bridgewater. Mm-hmm. Uh, she says to my wife, uh, do you ever hear Nikki call you? She yes. She, well, this time you're going to hear him and there'll be no mistaking it. And when we get home and we listen to the tape, at that point on the tape, you hear a little boy's voice say, Mommy? Really? Pretty impressive. We were pretty impressed. But when that story was printed in the AAEVP journal, uh-huh. a woman from Southern California contacted me and said, your son has been sending me EVPs since January of last year. She sent us a couple that we couldn't make out because it's like those submarine pictures with all the dots, and you can't see the foolish right. submarine. I'm doing right. this. I can't. <laughs> And so she sent us a couple of EVPs we couldn't make Not out. They're, they're, they're trained. But on a Sunday morning, I got up early, and there was an EVP from this Margaret Downing, her name is, in Southern California. She said, see if this sounds like your boy. And it was absolutely Nikki's voice saying very clearly, Mom and Dad, this is Nick. Wow. And I'll be glad to send it to you. So you yes, hear it. I'd love to hear And that. it's unbelievably clear. It sounds like a, like a ham radio, you know. Mm-hmm. Mom and Dad, this is Nick, like that. But it's absolutely his voice. Class A. And he has done so many things. I have one other photo that I'd like to show you. Yes. Um, two and a half years after Nikki passed, we all went to um, New Ham- to New Hampshire to this Hart's Turkey Farm. Has everybody been there, Hart's Turkey Farm? Yeah. This is a place that tells turkey dinners. This is what they do. So everybody goes up on Thanksgiving, and they put a big white tent outside, and people stand outside in line in the freezing cold so they can have a turkey dinner that they could have had at my house. (laughs) So we all go to Hart's Turkey Farm, and there's nine of us, and we all sit down, and we have this turkey dinner, and I had to pay. And... When then we go to the hotel we're going to stay at all night long, that night rather. And we go to the hotel, and guess what they're giving away for free? Turkey dinners to all the people that are staying there. So I got beat out of that. But while we were there... Which I that way. Yeah, I know. <laughs> while we were there, we were in a room. Let me just do this. Uh, this, is, this is me on a, uh, on a bed. And uh, this is me here. This is my, my wife is over here. And... Kara, you can see Kara. This is our niece, Kara. Mm-hmm. This is the way I look like when I'm standing up, by the way. This is... <laughs> okay. uh, so, but what you can't see in this photo is the person behind Joanne. I'm going to change this. Sorry. Actually, I can see Sorry, it I apologize. Should have told you. Are we going to zoom in a little bit on that? Here yeah. you go. Now you can take this if you'd like. Wow. You can see the shoulders. And a sweater. Yeah, it looks like a, a cable knit it sweater. It is, a cable knit sweater. And in the other photo that I just showed you at the bottom, um, I'm going to just move this if you want to go up there. Let me just move this and show you the other one. At the, bottom, at, at, at the bottom of Joanne's legs, you can see a black pair of pants right beside her. Yes. You can see, thank you, you can see where the, the sweater, you know, it has a shadow, but the black is very dark and solid. Oops. Right, mm-hmm. and this was what kind of camera? This was a digital camera. A digital. Yep. Mm-hmm. We have a we have a brother-in-law who never puts a camera down. Wow. <clears throat> oh, hand, stand here, take this. Well, we're glad he did this one. Right. Yeah. So you can see, this is pretty amazing stuff. That is. That mm-hmm. is very, very amazing, Dave. Yeah. And amazing. so this is this is what, and and we believe that Nikki, his job was to come here and do this. Mm-hmm write this beautiful play that he wrote called They Walk Among Us 
the play is about teenagers who die and come back as angels. Uh -huh. mm. uh, he took four guitar lessons and wrote 50 songs. Wow. He, his job, we believe, is to have this happen to him at a young age and to have these signs so that we could tell everybody not to be afraid. Uh, in his play, They Walk Among Us, one of his lines is, do not fear to hope. Uh -huh. And we put it on his headstone. And so now, with all the time I've done radio and television and stand-up comedy and stage and you name it, I realize now that, that I was just being trained to do this, to talk about these things, to give this message, and to tell everybody that nobody goes anywhere. Their loved ones are around you, they're with you, and they love you, and they're say peekaboo every now and then and you have to accept it for yourself because the more you accept it the more you receive right and that's my story and I'm sticking to it excellent excellent yeah. now what is the uh, significant significance of carousel uh, well the carousel uh, the last the last time Nikki and Chris were together they were in Nikki's room and Chris was trying to get some sleep and Nicky, of course, was playing his guitar and driving him nuts, and he and uh, Chris and his wife, Leo, were, were there. And he said, let's all sing songs from that great old musical Carousel. Uh -huh. And then after, Nicky said, you know, I don't know why we, I said that, because I don't know what Carousel is about. Well, Carousel is about a young man who passes and comes back and watches over his family. Uh -huh. So that was a pretty cool story, and then then came the year uh, when Nikki passed. That year came Mother's Day. Mm -hmm. And Chris, wanting to get the very special present for his mother, what do you get a mother who's lost a child mm -hmm. on Mother's Day? Well, he was very considerate about it. And being the big spender that he is, he went to the flea market. <laughs> <laughs> and when he got to the flea market, they were playing the, the soundtrack from Carousel. Uh huh. And he thought, well, this is odd. <laughs> and so he, he, he found this terrific carousel music box. A little carousel horse on it, wound up, you know, played a song from carousel. So she, he got that for his mom. Uh -huh. Very beautiful. Hmm. So she got the present. It was very nice. We listened to it, put it on a counter where Nikki's pictures are, and we forgot about it. And that night, Nick was, uh, Chris was in the living room having some Chinese food. And Joanne and I were in the bedroom, just talking. <laughs> okay. and, and he said, Mom, Mom, come in, come in quick. And we ran in. And the carousel horse started to play all by itself at 941. And it stopped right. at 942. Unbelievable. Happy Mother's Day, Mom. Yeah, yes. perfect. Yeah. Perfect. And they go on and on. She, uh, you know, Joanne and Nick have been, I mean, every mother is close to their child, but every mother has that certain connection to her children. And Nikki and Joanne were so tight that we mm -hmm. worried about her being able to survive this incident. Such a shock. Mm -hmm. But she, because of Nikki's signs, because of Nikki's letting us know he's okay. It's really helped her through. It has helped her and helped her to tell others, too. She's a very quiet person, not, you know, obnoxious like me. She's, like, really nice. And, and so she has been encouraged to tell, too. I don't know how much time we have left. Do you have enough time for another story? Or we'll stop? Oh, yeah, we've got about five minutes. Okay, let me tell you this one. Joanne worried that Nikki suffered in the, in the fire, that the flames hurt him. Oh, yeah. Actually, that was going to be my next question. <laughs> Great. Um, Nick must have told me that. Um, and in every medium we'd been to, we asked, and the answer was always no pain, no pain. Uh -huh. When we didn't ask, he would volunteer, no pain, no pain. This drove Joanne crazy. I mean, she really worried about it. Mm -hmm. And every time he'd tell it, no pain. Well, one year, we, about two and a half years after we were, or two years or so after we were, um, after the fire, we were tagging a Christmas tree out in Lincoln. And um, Joanne was in this mode again. So we tag the tree, we go, we get in the car, she's driving, and, and being the kind, compassionate, gentle husband that I am, I was screaming at her, <laughs> saying, when are you gonna get this? When are you gonna get it? 
no pain, no pain. He's told you, Maureen Hancock, medium, no pain. Robert Brown, medium, no pain. Cindy Gilman, medium, no pain. Uh, Roland Comtois, no pain, no pain, no pain. Everybody's told you, no pain. When are you gonna get it? And as soon as I said that, there was a car coming from the other direction and the vanity plate said, no pain. That moment. Oh my. And we haven't worried about it since. Mm -hmm. That's just what she needed. Well, it's what just we all right needed. Time. We all needed. I mean, you, certainly I worried about it too, but, but knowing that they're okay now, knowing that all of that is behind them, it mm -hmm. doesn't mean anything now. That's, that's what I would have needed though, because I'm, I'm rather skeptical um, when it comes to psychics and mediums and, and uh, that sort of thing. And hearing that, that wouldn't, that wouldn't have been enough for me either. But what you just described, that would have done it. Well, Robert Brown, I mean, th that's interesting about being skeptical about that you would say that because, you know, uh, what we don't know would fill volumes. You know, uh, uh, in the Bible, you spoke of the Bible. In the Bible, Jesus says, what I did, you can do and more because mm -hmm. I will be with the Father. And so this is about being able to do this, you know, being able to understand and being open to it as well. Robert Brown, when we went to see Robert Brown, he, uh, we had to go to New York. I had had, in September the year he passed, I had two heart attacks and quadruple bypass surgery. Four weeks later, I'm on Amtrak going to New York to see Robert Brown, because my wife had read his book. And one of the nights she was reading the book, she put the book down, put her glasses down. Next morning she woke up, looked down to make sure she didn't step on her glasses, and there was a white feather on the book. So she called to get Robert Brown's, uh, we got an appointment with him, we went to meet him. For an hour he told us stuff we didn't even know was correct until after we checked it. And the bottom line is, as we were leaving, he said to me, your son wants me to tell you one more thing. He wants me to tell you the show must go on. And what he didn't know, what nobody knew but Joanne and I, were those are the very last words Nikki spoke to me. Really? The show wow. must go on because he was opening for Great White mm -hmm. and he wasn't getting much money for the gig and I was teasing him, Nick, it's show business, gotta get your bucks. And when we got to his girlfriend's house, I was driving him, he said, I said, I just don't know why you'd sell God's talent so short. And he gave me a hug and a kiss, he said, Dad, because the show must go on. And he got out of the car. Wow. Great takeaway message from this show. Exactly, exactly. And of course, the message is, the show must go on, life goes on, mm -hmm. and continues, never really ends. And do not fear to hope. Do not fear to hope about this. Do not fear, you know, people, men especially, they're afraid that this isn't true. Mm -hmm. It's not that they're afraid it's true, they're afraid it isn't true. They want it to be true. People want this to be true, but they're afraid they're gonna get sucked into something. Right. So we need to have the hope. We need mm -hmm. to have the, the, the willingness to accept. Dave, I hope you come back again and join us Love very to. soon. Love to. Thank you. Thanks for I, I think there's much more to Thanks say. So much. There's Repeat. much more to talk about. The book? We have to go. <laughs> 41 Signs of Hope. Yep. And, uh, and the again. movie, 41themovie.com. Check it out. 41 very good. Movie. Absolutely. All right. Thanks. Thank you, Dave. All right. I'm... See, I was good, huh? Oh, you were great. <laughs> God bless you. <laughs> <laughs>